Not too long ago, Mazda was known as a mass market automotive brand that had a strong lineup of sporty vehicles. While others moved away from focusing on driving dynamics and worrying more about fuel economy numbers, Mazda was still making cars like the Mazda Speed 6, the Mazda Speed 3, the RX-8, and the legendary Miata. However, over the last few years, Mazda slowly moved away from its Zoom Zoom tagline, and now the only sports car that it sells is the Miata. In fact, besides the Miata and the Mazda 3, the rest of Mazda's lineup is all SUVs. Oh yes, SUVs are taking over the world and there is nothing that you can do about it. And Mazda is now adding yet another SUV to its lineup. My name is Omar and this is the 2023 Mazda CX-50. So yeah, SUVs are now really important to Mazda, and the main reason behind that is the success of the CX-5. The CX-5 accounts for more than half of Mazda's annual sales. In 2021, Mazda sold just over 332,000 vehicles, and more than 168,000 of those were CX-5s. So yeah, it's no surprise that Mazda is adding yet another SUV in its lineup. Now, the Mazda CX-50 isn't a replacement or a spin-off of the CX-5, even though it has a 5 in its name. In fact, this is based on the smaller CX-30 and is meant to be a more off-road type of SUV. Now, it's not a true off-road SUV like the Jeep Wrangler. This is meant for some light off-roading, something like what the Honda Passport can do. Nonetheless, a lot of this reminds me of the CX-5, the way it drives, the amount of space, and the overall actual size of it, and that's not a bad thing at all. So, if you're in the market for a compact SUV, should you consider the CX-50 over its competitors like the Honda CRV, the Hyundai Tucson, the Nissan Rogue, and the Toyota RAV4, and should you even consider it over the CX-5 itself? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the new Mazda CX-50. We'll check out the outside, we'll check out the inside, we'll check out the sometimes touchscreen display, stay tuned to find out what that's about, and then I'll take it for a drive and give you my opinion on if this should be your next SUV. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's go and do this. All right, let's get it going. Now, before we check out the interior and the exterior design, let's talk about ways the CX-50 differs from the CX-5 and how, if at all, this is more off-road focused. Interestingly enough, this is based on the CX-30 platform instead of the CX-5, but this is longer, wider, and actually lower. So getting in and out of the CX-50 feels more like getting in and out of a wagon or a sedan since you're sitting lower than you are in the CX-5. That said, even though you are sitting lower, you have a higher ground clearance in the CX-50 at 8.6 inches with the turbo and 8.3 inches with the non-turbo models, that's about an inch more than the CX-5. What about the off-roading parts? Well, other than the higher ground clearance, you have standard all-wheel drive, which you also have on the CX-5. You have the new standard Mazda Intelligent Drive Select, which gives you an off-road mode along with normal and sport, which you can also, again, get on the CX-5. So really, other than a more rugged look and an inch of extra ground clearance, the CX-50 isn't really any more off-road capable than the CX-5. The only thing that's really impressive is that the CX-50 can tow an extra 1,500 pounds more than the CX-5 for a total of 3,500, but that's only if you go for the turbo option. All right, let's take a seat inside the new Mazda CX-50 because just like every other Mazda, the interior is pretty premium and quite stylish. Usually when automakers do an off-road model, they kind of cheap out on the inside with a lot of hard plastic, and then they justify it by saying something like, oh, it'll be easier to clean if you get it dirty, but not here. The only thing I'll say about this interior is that this vent right here in the middle of the dash, it feels really lonely and is just kind of hanging out here like it fought with all the other vents. But everything here is still the best that Mazda has to offer. Now, Mazda's interiors aren't as technologically advanced as some of the competition, but everything in here is pretty simple and easy to use. So tech-wise, you get this 10.25-inch full-color display as standard on every CX-50 except the base base one, which gets an 8.8-inch screen. It's still not a touchscreen though, Mazda for some reason refuses to get into the touchscreen game, so you'll still have to use this dial knob thing down here, but this is only not a touchscreen if you're using the Mazda part of the infotainment. Now, all CX-50s, including the base base trim, get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as standard, which is pretty solid. Now get this, once you're in Apple CarPlay, the screen becomes a touchscreen. What? Why is this a thing? So look, I'm in Apple CarPlay, touching the screen, and it works. It actually works when you're in motion too. The moment I get back to the Mazda infotainment system part of it, it's no longer a touchscreen. 
Anyway, moving on, if you want navigation, you can only get that on the very top trim, the 650 Turbo Premium Plus. Now again, there is nothing too fancy or exciting about this infotainment system, but it is one of the last few non-touchscreen infotainment systems that is still fairly easy to use and never really craps out on you. As for the gauge cluster, again, nothing too fancy here, no full screen digital gauge cluster display. All you have is this seven inch TFT LCD screen in the middle, and it's pretty informative. I'm hoping that Mazda soon gets into a more advanced and updated tech experience in their vehicles. It's not like what you have here is bad, it just seems a bit outdated considering when you see what competitors like Hyundai, Kia, or even now Honda are doing. That said, this interior overall is very premium and very comfortable. Definitely more premium and comfortable than a lot of the competition out there. In terms of space and volume, the 650 feels a little bigger than the 65, but they are actually pretty much the same. The seats here are super comfortable and actually pretty stylish. Everything still has that Mazda layout that we've become used to. The center console has your volume knob, some shortcuts, your auto hold, and other buttons. And right behind that area, you have your wireless charging pad, but that's only available on the highest trim. Why? Because, I don't know, not sure why wireless charging pads aren't just standard as USB-A or USB-C ports, which you also don't have USB-C ports in the CX-50. But you still have physical climate controls in here, which a lot of people will appreciate. Now, if you go for the Turbo CX-50, you'll have the option to pick this terracotta interior color that's inspired by nature because, you know, you have that off-road life theme going on in here. You also get this really cool orange stitching on the dash, and you have some stitching here on the seats as well. I like the stitching quite a bit. All right, let's check out the space in the second row of the CX-50. As you can see, the door opens out quite a bit, so that's pretty cool. Once you get back here, you have a total of 39.8 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position. As you can see, I still have plenty of room there. Now, this does feel quite a bit more spacious than the CX-30, which has 36.3 inches. And this, in fact, has a tiny, tiny bit more legroom than the CX-5, which has 39.6 inches. And of course, we have to check out the cargo capacity. You can pop open the tailgate by using a button right down there. And once you get it opened, you have 31.4 cubic feet behind the second row. And with the second row folded, you have 56.3 cubic feet. The Mazda CX-5 has about two to three cubic feet more. But just like the CX-5, you don't have to walk around to fold the second row seats. You can use this latch right here and fold them down right from the cargo area. All right, let's talk about the exterior design of the new CX-50 because this is not only one of the best looking Mazdas in a long time, this is one of the best looking options in this segment. One of the only reasons you should definitely pick this over the CX-5 is the styling. It looks very cool with a nice blend of rugged and elegance. The CX-5 was one of the first vehicles in Mazda's lineup to get their new Kodo design language and the CX-50 takes it to the next level by making it look sleeker and tougher. It's like Kodo got into the off-roading life and was like, I'm Kodo and I must off-road. The best way to think about the exterior design of the CX-50 is like the CX-5 hit the gym and got a stylish new wardrobe. You've got a wider body with these flared wheel arches and that's what really gives the CX-50 its tough, wide stance. On the front, you've got a larger grille, which everyone is doing these days, but it definitely looks really cool here. Right underneath that, you have a tougher looking front bumper with a skid plate design. It's not a real skid plate. You've got these stylish new LED headlamps with LED daytime running lights. From the side, it looks longer than the CX-5 because it is. It's about six inches longer. Now on the back, it continues to look pretty tough and rugged. You have these really stylish LED taillights, but what are those? Yeah, those aren't real vents. They're just a design element to have this match the front end. Not sure if I like that. All right, so let's talk pricing. Pricing for the 650 starts off at $26,800 and tops out at $41,550. It's pretty much similar to the CX-5, around $2,000 or more across all trims, but it's pretty much on par with the rest of the segment. Now, I'm going to move quick here to cover some features to help you choose the trim that you should pick, and we'll skip over the base model because that's a bit boring with fabric seats, a smaller touchscreen, half touchscreen display and all that. Starting with the select, that's where you'll get the bigger 10.25 inch display. And that's where you'll also get dual zone climate control along with a larger set of 17 inch black alloy wheels. The seats will add some leatherette in here, but the front seats will still be manual adjustable. Moving up to the preferred, this is where you'll get a power adjustable driver's seat, but the passenger seat is still manual. You'll get three level heated front seats, which is pretty nice. And you'll get a power lift gate. Now, if you're about that plus life and you go up to the preferred plus, you'll get a power sliding panoramic roof, a first for Mazda. This is where you'll get full LED headlamps and you'll get dual exhaust outlets. Now, if you want to be all premium CX-50, that's where you'll get a power adjustable passenger seat. And now all the seats are full leather and you get a 12 speaker 
Bose sound system, which sounds really, really nice. It actually sounds pretty good. But if you've got money to throw around and you go all premium plus on the 650, you'll get bigger 20 inch wheels. You'll also get a heads up display and you'll enjoy some nice and cool ventilated front seats. If you want to go for the faster turbo 650, it'll cost you the same as the premium plus at $36,400 and you'll get a faster engine. You'll be able to tow more, but you'll lose some things like the heads up display, the Bose sound system, the cooled front seats, but don't worry because all of those get added back on when you move up to the turbo premium. And this is where you'll also get a heated steering wheel in this CX-50 lineup. Now say you're somebody that wants to go all out and get the top of the line 2.5 turbo premium plus you want everything. If you go for that trim, you'll get heated rear seats, which is pretty nice. A wireless phone charger, very nice, but that should have been standard everywhere. And you'll also get a 360 view camera. Nonetheless, as with most mass brands these days, you have all the driver assist and safety tech here as standard, including adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, hill launch assist, and all the other assists that you'll need. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the CX-50 drives and how it stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that might matter to you. You have four cup holders, two right there for the front passengers, and then when you come around the back, you have two in the center armrest right there. Here are what the keys look like to the CX-50, just like every other new Mazda key. You still don't have remote start on Mazda keys. I know you might have it in the app, but kind of like it right here on the remote. It's much easier to just do it when you're inside your house. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Solid. Charging game wise, again, you only have a wireless charger on the very top level trim, the Turbo Premium Plus, and then you have a USB-A port right here in the center armrest. Rear passengers get two USB-A ports. There are no USB-C ports in the CX-50. Indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. That's interesting, kind of new. And now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, that's good. All right, so let's talk about how this drives. The one I'm testing here is the CX-50 Turbo. This is powered by a 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine making 227 horsepower. It's mated to the same six speed automatic transmission that Mazda has been using for quite some time. And honestly, this is a great setup. It's got more than enough power for what you will use it for. Zero to 60 comes in at 6.2 seconds, which is pretty impressive for this segment. You also have an entry level engine option, which is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that makes 187 horsepower. But I would highly recommend upgrading to the turbo if you can, because it's just more fun to drive. Now Mazda says that there is a hybrid CX-50 on the way, but no details have been released yet. So for now, the turbo that I'm driving will give you 25 miles per gallon combined, while the non-turbo will give you 27 miles per gallon combined. I'm averaging after a total of six days of driving, a total of 21.1 miles a gallon. Now, ride quality wise, this reminds me a lot of the CX-5. When I first heard that this was going to be based on the CX-30, I thought it would drive like that as well, but this feels sturdier and more refined than something based on the Mazda 3. Comfort wise, the CX-50 is pretty impressive. I still think that the Honda CR-V is one of the smoothest riding options in this segment, but this isn't too far off from that. However, this definitely feels much better in terms of driving dynamics and handling. It just moves better than anything else in this segment. Pop it in sport mode and hit the gas and take a little bend. And this will leave you feeling pretty confident. Now, I know I said at the beginning of this video that Mazda is moving away from sports cars and more towards efficient SUVs, but don't get me wrong. Even though Mazda isn't offering rotary engines or performance oriented sedans, their vehicles still have some of the best driving dynamics of any mass market brand. And that's what I still love about them. Anytime someone asks me which affordable car I would recommend, I always ask them one question. Do you enjoy or care about driving or do you just want to get from point A to point B in an efficient way? And depending on their answer, I give them my recommendation, but I still try to convince them to enjoy driving. I honestly don't understand people that walk into a dealership and buy a run of the mill SUV. I mean, don't you wanna have even a little bit of fun? But yeah, even when Mazda does an SUV, there is still some focus on how the drive makes you feel. Yes, they are more about sky active now instead of zoom zoom, but the actual drive still matters to them. As for the off-road part of it, I think the CX-50 is dressed up to play that part well, but let's be honest. No one shopping in this segment is even remotely concerned with going off-roading besides the little bit of dirt that they'll drive over on the side of the road once in a while. 
That said, I highly recommend checking out the Mazda 650 if you're in the market for a compact SUV. This is a great addition, one of the best looking options in this segment, and the Zircon green color is awesome. If you're gonna get it in any color, get it in this one. The only thing that I really don't like is this half touchscreen, half not touchscreen display, and maybe let's get a digital gauge cluster display. Let's just update the tech in here a bit. It's just starting to show its age after a few years. And if you enjoy driving, even a little bit, the 650 should be your top pick in this segment. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Yeah, I love Mazdas. If you care about driving, definitely look into a Mazda. If you don't, there are many other options.